Welcome in to the Garden Report. Post-game edition. Post-game edition. Thanks. First show of the new great. year. Um, our New Year's resolution was not to get angry, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna blow it right here. <laughs> we damn it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. I, I don't know. Jimmy can control himself, man. I don't know about you, John. Yeah, John Jimmy can't play so much. We, Jimmy can't sway too much when we do the windows like oh, that. Oh shoot! You're yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you got to stay straight, my friend. Shoot straight here. Um, stay straight. All right. Be hard. Everybody saw what happened. Bad. Okay. Um, Celtics lose to the Pistons. The game started horribly. Um, Celtics roared back. Looks like looked like it was one of those like, oops, we'll be fine. Um, you know, pull it together late. Just horrible execution and shot selection down the stretch. I, I, people will debate it. Good shots, open shots. You know, taking things in rhythm. A Grant corner three. Jason, uh, uh, Marcus Smart, uh, open three uh, in transition there. The step up. Uh, uh, you know, again, Smart's layup there. And they're not the only ones who missed shots. Tatum and Brown both missed wide open threes, one to have taken a lead, one to tie the game. But I'm willing to accept those guys missing shots. I'm not willing to accept the other guys missing shots. I agree no, with you, you on that. You don't want them to take it, though. I think that's what it is. I don't want them to take it. I, I wanted to – I uh, Late in the clock, when you work it around, uh, maybe a different story. In bo- in almost all of those instances, I, I, I just didn't want Smart – I just don't want smart shooting late. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. No, you're, you're, you're totally, I mean, you know my, I sh- kind of share that opinion with you, which I know probably doesn't make the best TV, but I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, when, when Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are hitting shots as effectively as they were tonight, um, I don't have their field goal percentage in front of me, but I know that they were hovering around 50% or better. Um, so, those guys, that said, Jason, T- Bobby's here. That said, Jason Tatum. Um. Did miss a wide, did miss a wide open three. The guy you want taking the shot, uh, I think Jalen Brown. Did he miss one too down the stretch there? Uh, Jalen missed the last and, one. Yeah, yeah, Jalen missed the last one. Right, Jalen missed the last one. So it's kind of unfair to just single out Marcus Smart in the situation because everyone. But I'm going to do it anyway. I know, and, and I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, come on. I understand where you're coming from because you want to maximize your your I guess shots with with the, your two-headed monsters there but those guys missed him down the stretch too so i mean it's, it's not kind of just a- them jimmy though jalen brown did not have the ball in his hands nearly enough in the fourth quarter i mean entire possessions where you, you had to check to see if he was on the floor forget taking the shot it just right. didn't swing through him okay so jeff, jeff, teague, what- jeff teague comes in and the first First thing he does is look for his shot. He scored the second time, but at no point was he thinking about working it around or getting it to the two Jays. They just allowed the offense to run through different people. Like Jalen Brown, they went entire possessions that the ball didn't get into his hands. Yeah, I'm actually not going to go smart on this one. Grant Williams takes two of those last nine shots. I know. I, we already we, when you're late, Bobby, you're going to miss stuff. We we hit we we hit Grant. <laughs> yeah. So my point is, this goes back to what we've been talking about all season. Who's that fifth man in the lineup to close a game? We haven't been high on Grant, and still, he's the best option that they have at that spot uh, as a fifth option. And what the Pistons do? They sealed the lane, got the ball out of Brown and Tatum's hands. I didn't think any. The only shot. I thought was bad down the stretch was uh, Smart's pull up with 16 seconds left, and even that was kind of in rhythm off a pass. But they exactly. they they produced some good shots down the stretch. The problem is they went down 21 and probably were a little dead to end this game. Uh, but who's going to be your fifth reliable option when they get the ball out of Tatum's hands? When they get the ball out of Brown's hands, they still don't have one, and that's going to be a big part of surviving early this year. Is you know finding a steady hand who can hit those open shots late. But you're talking yeah, about the fifth. Bobby, Bobby, I, I think what, what John, you missed the part where John was saying that he just doesn't want it at all. Like, if those are good looking shots, I don't mind those guys taking it. Yeah, I, I don't either. Frustrated, John, I understand that. But that's what happens when you when you give up, you know, when you're behind by 21 points, when you're playing catch up. And that's what got them back. That's just essentially what got them back. I mean, what sealed it was obviously Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. They combined for eight points in that fourth quarter to grab their first lead of the night, their first lead of the night in the fourth quarter. So then moving on from that point, I felt like the flow of the offense, the way Marcus Smart was playing, the way he was attacking the basket, the way he was finding other guys, I thought he played great. He sort of earned those shots, if you ask me. But, yeah, you miss those shots. You live with those misses. But, John, you you can't single out. You can't bring up Marcus Smart and not talk about Tatum and Brown taking those open looks that were great looks, and they just didn't fall. 
This oh, that Tatum look was awesome. Down by well, I mean, I can. Shot matters down the stretch. That's what happens when you're going, when you when you're down by 21 points. Well, they weren't down. It was, it's the NBA. You're you're gonna go down big, and and a lot of they were seasons, dreadful though early. They, they earned they earned that deficit. I mean, that was a horrific first quarter. Credit to them. The second half, they played with a lot more energy and a lot more purpose. They they brought it back to a close game. They took the lead at points. They, as a team, collectively went completely cold late in that fourth quarter. I don't know exactly the the uh, full amount of time that it was that they yeah, because scored, these guys was, needed a, they, they needed a breather. I feel like, and then once they came back, no, the they things, really need a. I mean, these guys once they came back in the rhythm of things, twenty two, they, they couldn't hit the shots. Jason Tatum is nineteen years old. And he needs a breather. I mean, these these guys are professional players. Like. Like, don't give me that. I mean, listen, they miss the shots. Sometimes they go down, sometimes they don't. But I'm with John in the sense where and, – and, Bobby, you're talking about, oh, they don't have a fifth option. They don't have a fifth option. It shouldn't come down to the fifth option. Brad Stevens should be able to get his guys in the correct sets to get your guys the ball. You don't think that they – they don't think that – Well, he did that, James, you know. The Rockets yeah. James Harden the ball at the end. You know, I mean, you can go right. down the line on, on, on teams that get their star players the ball. So don't tell me that Grant Williams has to take the shot or Marcus Smart has to take the shot. Like, well, John, let me ask you – hold on real quick, John. Let me ask you this, though. How do you feel about the play itself, though? Because you got to look for Jalen Brown. One? It wasn't an ISO look. It was a shot, obviously. It was it was great like plays, player. great sets. I liked both I mean, plays setting up the Jalen and Jason because that's yeah, those, those are the guys you want to set up. Grant Williams should ISO. never be taking shots late in games, ever. Ever. So you think that the game essentially, though? I, I'm just saying, look, you're you, when you have games that are decided late, you point to the things that happened late. Obviously, what the reason they lost this game is because they went down by 21 points to the Pistons and sleepwalked through the entire first quarter, and they yeah. found themselves in this position. It should never be this close. But in any late game situation, I just can't. You just you just don't want Grant Williams and Marcus Smart taking well, if a guy's out there, they're going to take an open shot. And that's the problem. Like, he, he shouldn't be out there in that position. That's right. Brad's offense, though. You know? Yeah. And, you know, and it was good offense. They went 0-9 to close this game. But it was all good shots, except for that Smart one. Uh, so, you know, I, I can't blame too much of what happened in crunch time here. What really threw them off, I felt like, though, to begin that fourth quarter was they put out that great lineup, at arguably what should be the starting lineup by the end of this year. Three guards and Rob, plus I Tatum at the four. And Rob goes down. They start mixing in T, Grant through that stretch. And, you know, that, that might have been your closing uh, five to cl uh, end this game. But then you end up with that Grant-Tice combo that I haven't loved at all. And Tice played well again tonight. But, I mean, I've defended Grant as being a guy who can hit threes off of the, uh, you know, defense collapsing. And he couldn't do that late. So I don't know which Grant's giving you, period, if he can't do that. Another rough night for him, minus three. You know who could do that, Bobby? Sadiq Bay, five three pointers. Man, does that dude look like he's not a, a rookie, or is it just me? I don't know. And this is, I, I mean, remember. Is distance, but. I remember our conversation vividly about him because I think we both liked him. And he was a wing, a guy who could fill in at the wing right away, a guy who had played multiple years of college basketball, like Pritchard, uh, and was ready to go on the defensive end and was a 40% three point shooter. He'd be looking pretty good on that wing spot for Boston. There's no doubt about that. Three and D. So you know. Rob Williams went up, but he was apparently available to play. Um, is Brad Stevens still? I mean, we're kind of picking up where we left off with like the center position here, where it's like you don't on any given night it could be any of these guys just getting minutes. We have really no rhyme or reason to who it is or when or or why. Whether it's Tice Thompson now in the mix, Rob Williams, Grant Williams. Um, again, I mean, I'm 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 not like hating on Grant Williams. I just don't know if he's ready for crunch time, end of game minutes. Um, I, I would rather, I, and I know that Thompson's not going to help you with any outside shooting, but don't tell me that Tristan Thompson isn't familiar with like being a big game player in the fourth quarter because he is, and he can grab boards. Um, you know, he can give you um, extra opportunities. A guy like Rob Williams, you already know that what he's capable of working with Tatum and Brown. So I just don't know if if Grant Williams is helping you more or hurting you more when he's in there late in games. So. They don't have a lot of options right now, and that's the killer. And that's what I mean, guys. Jalen Brown. We're not just talking about the last three or four possessions. Jalen Brown got did not have the ball nearly. He was unguardable in this game. Okay, yeah. he was unguardable. Okay, 
I, I, I'm so confused by all of the late game execution. I, we, we always point to Brad here, and everyone will say it's an overreaction. Guys are going to take open shots. This is again at those times. It's do the people on the floor know what they're supposed? Are the people on the floor told just go out there and play, and if you have a shot, take it? Are they told, hey guys, be careful with the ball here. Get it to Jalen and Jason. They're cooking. If something comes to you within the flow, sure, take it. Or is it? Go out there, and if you want, dribble around and see if you can score on your own. It's cool. Everybody likes basketball. It's fun. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like <laughs> Those back-to-back -back team possessions are the ones that kill me more than anything. Who told – and Thompson one time just got the ball and started powering his way into the lane. Who told these guys that's what they're supposed to do? Like, I'm so oh. confused at, at, at these times. Within the flow – like, what's amazing is Marcus – this was one of those games where everybody's cold, so I'm going to shoot because somebody's got to score, and Marcus hit a couple threes early. That's almost the worst thing that can happen for him because then he's like, oh, yeah. cool, I'm just going to shoot, you know? Um, smart game. Right, and then it turns it into the Marcus Smart game. Smart. I don't think they, they yeah. never win any of those Marcus Smart games. When he when Marcus Smart scores a lot of points, those always go bad. You I don't know, know if that's his fault, though. That that usually means that other guys aren't. That everybody else. Was that cold. was the problem tonight. Yeah. yeah, I didn't love the way Tatum started this game. Brown obviously no was no energy at all. Uh, the, the the ball handling, especially to begin this game, was shameful. And the way the rate at which this team's turning the ball over through some of these games to start the year is enormously concerning because. The goal for this team by the end of the year is can Tatum, can Brown be your lead ball handlers, you know, at least until Kemba Walker gets back and get you into those crunch time moments. There wasn't a quarter in this game where they weren't throwing the ball away or Smart was whipping it out of bed. Like everybody took some level of blame in that one. And that got the Pistons going too. Uh, the live ball turnovers that just sent them out in transition, got them a lot of second chance opportunities. I was surprised with how the Pistons came out in this one. They really battled. They took it to Boston from like the earliest minutes with the hard drives and just had endless energy to begin this so i don't know it was a new year's eve or what that just had the celtics looking dead in that first half but that they you can't start a game anywhere so that you expect to you know be far ahead by the end of it detroit played a strong strong game here for a bit but you could see what was happening and, and the celtics should have once they once they pulled ahead by five points there six points right. might have been the, the, the biggest lead what I think was it, was it? Four that toward the end. No, there it was the five for phase. sure. Yeah, it was five for sure. Yeah, they had a five point lead in that four. At least, yeah. yeah. It was at the, uh, it was at the Tatum and Tatum and Brown. They combined for eight, eight straight. It was like an eight zero run, and then they just went cold. Or the team went cold for what four minutes? Those those right. four minutes in the middle of the of the fourth. I mean, that's when you essentially take control of the game right there. That's what they they did everything except for that final step. It's like man, they needed one. More shot, erased, pretty much. Yeah. One point deficit, right? Exactly. You erased it, and you still have what eight minutes in the fourth, like plenty of time. Yeah, or Marcus was playing two walk free in throws. The yeah, there's so, there were so many things that that led to this. Uh, the office that. dried up, John. I think the office dried up. I really, I really do. Completely. Just, yeah. I, I don't know if up, yeah. get the ball and Jalen was the answer, though. I, I don't. I, I hear you though. Those last couple of minutes, it, they were they were very they were very uh, liberal with the ball for sure. And that's <laughs> why, like. Obviously, you want Jalen and Jason taking those shots down the stretch. But, John, I mean, look at the – I mean, we, if you watch the game, we all watched the game tonight, neither of those guys were, were anywhere near on from from deep tonight. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the three-point shooting tonight was terrific from both those guys. So well, for, it for wasn't the entire like every, team, yeah. Exactly. So, but that's, so that's what I mean. Like, yeah, I mean, typically if I see Marcus Smart stepping into a 28-footer, I'm not happy about that. But, I mean, it's a wide-open shot. In, in, you know, motion, I'll take it because Jalen and Jason, as good as uh, uh, Jalen Brown was tonight, and really both guys really were, you know, they were not, you know, sharpshooters from, you know, beyond the arc. I think Jalen Brown was like one of seven or eight or something. So, again, I mean, yeah, you want those guys being the ones down the stretch taking the shot every single time. But I will say, even though Jason Tatum missed the shot, I or Jalen Brown and Jalen Brown missed the shot, those were both two good looks out of, out of um, you know, stoppage. And it wasn't just Jason Tatum throwing up a step back three pointer prayer that, you know, if it goes in great and if it doesn't, we're all criticizing Brad and criticizing Tatum for decision-making. So yeah, the shots didn't fall tonight, but at least they got good looks. Um, and you know, you just take this L and you go back out there on Sunday and hopefully they can, you know, they should be able to take care of business on Sunday. Yeah.